Hello friends, this video on cell part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the shapes of cells. So we, look, we looked at the number of cells, now it's turn for the shapes. Now the way we have the number of cells ranging from 1 to millions and billions and trillions, similarly cells can have a variety of shapes. Now the shape of cells vary with the functions which they perform and that is why we have uh, spherical cells, we have elongated cells, we have tapered cells. So there are many varieties of shapes which are found for different cells. So let us look at some of the cells which are of different shapes. If you look at this ciliated epithelial cells, so these cells again long narrow at the same time they have cilia. So this cilia that increases the surface area and that's how it helps in further absorption. So ciliated epithelium and the cuboidal epithelium. So if you compare these two, their shapes are not the same. However, both of them are epithelial cells but still their shapes are different. If you look at the shape of cells for WBCs and RBCs, so they are also mostly RBCs are round or biconcave in shape as you can see here. But WBCs again they have amoeboid shape that means they do not have an exact shape. Their shape is like amoeba which has no fixed shape, changing shape. So that's how WBCs are, the white blood cells. Then you have the nerve cell or the neuron. The nerve cell is a long cell. It is also branched. So you can see branches coming out of the nerve cells. So that's how the shape of the nerve cells are. Again, if you look at these cells, what are these? So these are the cartilage and the bone cells. This, this is how they look like, the bone cells or the cartilage cells. Then if you look at the mesophyll cells which are present in the leaves of plant, Mesophyll layer, they contain the main pigment responsible for the process of photosynthesis. So these mesophyll cells, mostly they are round or oval. So these are the mesophyll cells and if you look at their shape, they are mostly round or oval in shape. If you look at the trachids, these are also elements of plants, they are also present in plants. So these are elongated cells, quite long and have tapering ends on both sides. So here on the screen, you look at a variety of cells and all of them are present either inside the animal body or the plant body and you see, you actually get to see a variety of shapes. If you look at the nerve cells, they have branched structure, very different. The purpose of nerve cell is to conduct impulses from one part of the body to another. So that's why they have this shape. If you look at the shape of the epithelial cells, you look at uh, cuboidal epithelium and again you look at the ciliated columnar epithelium. So they have got different shapes because they are used for different purposes. They have different purpose. The ciliated epithelium, it is present in the, in, in, in the respiratory tract and it is used for removing the dust particles or the foreign matter out of the respiratory system. That's why they have the cilia. So that's how, depending upon the function which they perform, cells have different shapes. Now there are many cells which can change their shape. That means they do not have a constant shape. Their shape keep on changing. So let us try to look at some of these type of cells. Amoeba is an example of an organism which is made up of one cell. As I mentioned before, it is unicellular. And this one cell which makes amoeba, it keeps changing its shape and that is why we say that amoeba doesn't have a fixed shape. So here you look at this example. This is the example where amoeba intakes food. That means it takes in the food. Let us suppose this is a food material. So let us just assume that this is food and this is the amoeba. Now amoeba wants to engulf this food particle. So how will it engulf? So if you look at this picture, it shows it in steps. Step 1, step 2 and step 3. So in step 1, the food is outside amoeba and in step 3, the food has entered inside. So how the food had entered inside? That's because amoeba changed its shape in such a way that this food particle gets trapped inside amoeba. 
and that's how food is taken in and this has become possible only because this cell is able to change its shape so if you look at the shape of amoeba here this is the shape of amoeba and amoeba is nothing but just one cell now in step 2 the shape of the cell is somewhat like this and in step 3 the shape of the cell is again different so the shape of amoeba is continuously changing so amoeba changes its shape not only for intake of food but also for locomotion so if you see here so this is for locomotion and this change in shape was for food so for locomotion what it does this is how the amoeba is now let us suppose this amoeba wants to move in this direction so in that case it extends itself in this way and that's how it keeps changing its shape and it also moves in one direction so you see it started from somewhere here and it is gradually moving towards this direction and this happens due to this extension of a part of amoeba's body in that direction and this is known as pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means feet so pseudopodia that is false feet so this this is there is no feet actually for amoeba but the body of amoeba it keeps changing its shape to act like a feet and that's how it moves from one place to another so here amoeba was one example where the cell changes its shape depending upon the need another example of such a cell is the double white blood cells present in human beings not only human beings white blood cells are present in other organisms as well so these white blood cells they also keep changing their shape so now if you we talk about uh, the shape of cells so we should quickly look at the different cells which are present in human body so here you can see some cells might be spherical some might be elongated some might be spindle shaped now what is a spindle it is an elongated cell which has tapered ends so the ends will be tapered but when i say elongated it is going to be something like this so it is going to be the same throughout but for spindle it has to be tapered towards the end and spherical is something like this spherical can be spherical or round or oval it can also be branched like one cell and then it is branching off like this so can you give examples of all these shapes of cells which are present in human body let us quickly look at these cells so the branched cell is nothing but the nerve cells here also the diagram is incomplete so this is how the nerve cell looks like nerve cell which is also called as neuron so this is how neuron would look like so this is a branched cell now here if you see this ovum, ovum is an example of a spherical cell, right? Ovum is nothing but the egg cell. Again, if you look at a spindle shaped cell, this smooth muscle cell is a spindle shaped cell. You see, it has got tapering ends and it is quite elongated. So that way it's different cells inside the human body also have different shapes. So cells the shape of a cell completely depends upon the function which it performs. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.